Hey, welcome back, Knife Nerds and Everyday Care People. It's your boy, the Big Canucker, and got myself a uh, Nissan. I was gonna say Nissan Skyline, <laughs> a Kershaw Skyline, and this bugger is a little bit stiff right out of the box. It's brand new. It's a new in box, and it's got the black wash. And it's something that I've wanted to put in my collection and carry for a while. Uh, you know what? Any if you're, I think, a knife guy and your collector you want to have some good examples of those knives that have made an impact or they're really big sellers um, uh, and throughout the whole cutlery industry and there are certain knives that i think are considered hall of fame knives and i think the skyline is one of those knives now based on what you can get now for the price now when you put this side by side with a lot of the knives that you've got going on in um in the countryside to see the kaiser t1 uh that's a monster of a knife any of the civivi knives uh, even san ranmu those knives i mean for the price so you put them against this knife and i paid 70 dollars for this shipped to my door uh, pre-owned but the guy is new in box and it actually came with the box the um blade looks absolutely brand new uh, there's no marks on it. It lo doesn't look like it was used at all and it's not been broken in and that's a big I think a big knock on these Kershaw's right from the start is they don't seem to be uh, They seem to be a little stiff right off the bat and now where was I going to my other uh, thing? Oh yeah, for, for the price. I mean there's been so much uh, Advances in the cutlery industry over the last uh, seven years that when this knife came out It was definitely cutting edge and it was definitely wicked knife for the money it's definitely a hall of fame knife but it's just it's maybe the the, the shine has come off the apple a little bit um because for what you can pay for this knife you can get some awfully nice nice cutlery now what i want to take this video to do uh, is i want to see if i can open this up let's see what's the innards are like let's see what we can do to this knife to get perhaps get this a little bit smoother ready for me to carry and then after i've carried this for a while i'm going to give the review and that's kind of the one of the curses of being i guess a knife guy a knife reviewer or somebody who has a lot of blades in their pockets is i don't think i would get a chance to carry this long term where this is gonna break in naturally over you know a year or so and become that flick buttery smooth i need to kind of maybe see if i can uh, speed it up a little bit so i can give you an honest assessment of this knife when it happens so uh, we're going to cut the black here for a bit and uh, we will uh, get you to the tabletop and we will uh, get this ready to see if we can, we'll see if we can get this ready to rock. All right, we are back here and uh, we've got the tabletop view. Apologize, I'm a little out of breath. I had to run downstairs and grab something. And it's actually this. Astute viewers will know that I usually have a lucky loony or a lucky toony here. And right now I've got something that's incredibly important to me and I just thought I would share it with you guys. This is a silver dollar that was given to me when I was born, when I was a baby. I was born in 1970 and um, all the children that were born in a certain month in 1970 were given this special commemorative silver dollar. Now it was stolen when I was a baby and my dad actually managed to retrieve it after all these years, 50 some years later, and uh, it's back in our possession and he gave it to me and is incredibly precious to me too as well. And I just want to share this with you guys. I don't know uh, what it's worth or if anything, it is worth a billion dollars to me because it's something that bothered my dad for years and it's something that he managed to track down, he got, and uh, don't know how, my dad's kind of a Columbo, I guess. <laughs> For all you guys who remember Columbo, I was talking to you guys about Fonzie the other day. Yes, don't forget to be subscribing Fonzies. Thumbs up and give me the subscribe A. All right. So we've got this. And so what we're going to do first of all is we're going to open this up and let's see what we have to deal with. Okay. Now, the other thing I want to do is take this clip off. And I love my knives being tip up and there's a tip down so this one here comes with a tip down clip but it also has the ability to become a tip up clip so let's see if we can do that we'll get that going and that's the first thing we're gonna do to make this thing a little bit nicer 
or at least a little bit nicer for me to carry. Now, I, I don't know. I haven't seen an, uh, too many Kershaw Skyline videos, and I may have seen one that uh, what the innard is, innards are. I don't 100% know what they have in here, if they've got phosphor bronze washers, if they've got nylon washers. But um, let's find out. Let's see if there's something that we can do to perhaps get this flicking a little bit smoother rather than having it break in over a year or so or however long it takes to break in. Oh my goodness, these are kind of a little bit longer screws for... for uh, for this clip pocket clip so let's just put this in here well let's just leave it off to the side for now we'll put these here like that so it uh, looks like it takes a six mil on the uh six mil on the clip and six mil on the body screws too as well and Looks like she's got a back spacer, pace back spacer, and oh, there's some quite long. Well, we've got two long screws, and let's see what we got here: a pivot screw, and then on this side, it looks like we have got a form-fitted, uh, a form-fitted pivot retainer nut or something like that and then let's go and it looks like there is a little bit of thread locker on there but they're not seem to be overly tight there and of course here we've had our backspacer fall out just like butter and let's just see here let's see if we can give that a little bit of a wiggle oh it looks like there is i did pour some lube in there it looks like there is some lube and it looks like there is a phosphor bronze washer uh, but it looks like here let's see what we can get um hmm that's the one thing i forgot is my cleaning medium i'm gonna pause it here for a second i'll be right back with some stuff to clean this up all right welcome back here so what we're gonna use here is we've got some cotton swabs and these actually come from this bag of industrial cotton swabs that i ended up picking up at a local hardware store was having a big blowout sale and so they were originally 10 bucks a bag down to four and i ended up getting them for two bucks a bag and i bought half a dozen of them and it's a crap load of these um, heavy duty cotton swabs. And then I've also got some good old alcohol. And then once in a while you need some of this stuff here, which is your a nail polish remover, or um, I can't remember what the heck this stuff is called. Um, they used to sell acetone, that's what it is. So sometimes you've got some lacquers or you've got some um, polishes uh, in there or even some thread lockers that this won't touch. Well, then you've got this, which is the big guns. And then, of course, I've got just a, a lint-free microfiber cloth that's white. And you'll be wondering, well, how am I going to use this wonderful cloth for cleaning knives? Well, because my wife is a detailer, and these cloths come from... Um, every time she does a ceramic coating, which is a paint protectant type of thing, uh, they come with uh, one of these and one of these. So I have literally got... 40 of these white cloths and maybe about 20 of these here as well and so they're uh, another even finer cloth so hey that's just a benefit of being married to a powerful woman all right so let's just clean this all up here we'll get a little bit of the alcohol and it looks like we do have bronze phosphor washers uh, we'll take that right off because she looks like she's been stuck on there for a long time. And even though this knife is still fairly new, you can see what's coming off of it. There is, seems to be some stuff. And let's just see if we can pop that off. And let's just see if we can get it off of this side too as well. <sighs> yeah. She, boy, she sure doesn't want to come off there. So we might have to find ourselves. Oh, there we go. And then we've got bronze phosphor on the other side. And it looks like we have got some awful stuff on this pivot here right now. So we will get that all. And you can see where it looks like it's starting to kind of spin a little bit. So that might be why this is so tight is the fact that according to what I have always been kind of taught in knife land, is when your blade is going, your um, 
your pivot here is supposed to slide on the inside of your washers, not on your outside. So when this is actually turning, it should be actually marring up the inside of this washer as well as the knife um, blade too as well. And you can see that when they actually did this acid wash or this black stone wash, they did not cover this pivot. So that is another reason I think this is a little bit slow is uh, you don't have this uh, pivot area being protected. So let's just tidy this up because it doesn't need a whole lot. We'll put that off to the side. So I don't think we're going to do much polishing on here. We'll just get this off the side and let's just worry about our our bronze phosphor washers and our blade. And you can see here, it's ever so slightly starting to wear that away. You can see where it's like that. Now that, if this was completely polished, then that's kind of your break-in period's over and she's gonna be ever so slightly, um, uh, I think it's going to be a lot smoother. And then the other thing too as well, as you're gonna see here, there's no detent path really worn in there yet. So this hasn't been opened a whole lot of times. Otherwise you're gonna see like a nice little shiny line there. And if you don't have those, I think you've got a knife, especially this knife, the way it was built and designed, that's not going to be as um, smooth. And you can see here that it's ever, it's very slightly, it's not um, too shiny here. And we're gonna see if we can take care of this stuff all by hand too as well, folks. Uh, I'm sure that we have got, uh, uh, I'm sure that we have got, you know, power tools that can take care of this in a GIF, but not everybody's got a nice Dremel. Not everybody's got a whole bunch of polisher and stuff like that. So let's just see what we can do with just by hand. All right, she's a small load dead by hand. I didn't even get any damn <laughs> alcohol on that fingertip. There we go. <laughs> just dry wiping this damn thing. And just want to see it. Oh, geez, a little. Now, one of the things you might want to take care of in a situation like this is maybe tape this blade because it is very sharp. I got to say, she's very sharp. So let's just see if we can do this without cutting ourselves. So let's just set this off to the side and let's start on these washers here. Let's get them tidied up. We'll get the oil off them. And then we'll see if we can get them to be nice and shined up. Okay, so let's do that because we're going to use our strop block from Knifeworks. Knifeworks, Kitchenworks, Chefworks. Uh, I can't remember exactly what it's called. Here, let's do this. Yeah, let's get her off. You can see how she's got lots of stiff on there. Okay. Put the lid on my alcohol hall on my booze as mr shabazz likes to say that way i'm not worried about tipping over we'll get this out of the way and let's bring our little bit of this here and so now what you want to do is you want to take your um your washers and you either want to get a nice little strop or something with some super super fine sandpaper you don't want to take these and change the thickness of them too much because then you throw off the the way the knife would design and then your blade is going to be i think off a little kilter all right so let's just see here let's just see so also you try to do it in circular motions like this and a couple little strokes and you can see how it it cleaned it up just like that how fast that cleaned up and this side here is which side is the knife side I do believe that is a knife side right there. So I got both knife sides and I'm going to shine them up here. Now, the reason I'm only gonna shine up one side is because like I said, we want the back side here to not spin. So you wanna have a little bit of friction against your, um, your uh, scale and your washer. And then you want the th really, really thin part to be facing the blade so therefore it gets its smoothness like butter and so you just want to kind of go in circular motions now when you've got a strop like this rather than sandpaper you're not going to really be taking off oh you can see how it's it's so much nicer just like that than it is um than it uh, it was now if we've got that now we've also got stuff that you can try out here and this is just a 
piece of uh, cheap wood. These are little wedges that I got, and I just needed them f for a minute, and I just threw some uh, diamond emulsion on there, and it uh, also does some fans. There we go. See how much shinier that's gotten in that little bit here? <clears throat> it's a little bit easier to do it on here than it is on that strop, but... I mean, ultimately, it's the same. You, what you want to do is you want to shine these up like crazy. <laughs> the shinier they are, the smoother they're going to be as well. There. Look at that. Just like butter. Now. We'll put those off to the side. Off to the side. Here, we'll give that one more. Little, one more of a little bit of a go. And like I said, you can use sandpaper, but you just like a really fine 2000 grit sandpaper or something like that. But if you do it too much on the sandpaper, you'll notice how your sandpaper is starting to get that little bit of a copper um, sheen to it. And you can see that you're removing material rather than just shining them up. All right, so we got that done. So we'll get this out of the way. Now, we could even take it one more step here. So now what we have here is we have got a super flat ceramic um a super flat ceramic stone by spider co and on it is some 0.25 grit uh diamond emulsion and you can use that too as well that will work get rid of this um giving it a more of a shine now this sometimes i'll use this a lot of people say this is stone is a 2500 grit stone but when you put this a diamond emulsion on it it really seems to bite a whole lot more and i have a really really uh wicked wicked edges on my knives because of lots of times i'll do kind of a final strop on this stuff and this emulsion on this ceramic stone oh my goodness it is sharp and let's just see what this has done Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Sorry. There you can see how she's even she's even getting shinier in the center there. All right, but let's so let's get this out of the way. So I just want to kind of get that stuff there just to show you what you can do with these. And here we'll give it one last little polish here just to clean off any sort of remaining diamond emulsion I'll throw it up there and just like butter so let's get this stuff out of the way and let's look at what we can do with the knife blade i have to give you one second here i'm going to grab another thing all right so now let's have a look at this let's see if there's something that we can grab to maybe make this a little bit smoother and so what I have here is I have got a sanding block. And this is actually used for the automotive world. The sanding block as well as the sanding paper. And this is a wet dry sanding paper and it is phenomenal. And so what I want to do is I want to just kind of use this to see if I can get rid of a little bit of this uh, stone wash. And then I'm going to see if I can polish this off to, up a little as well. And so like I said, because this is a wet dry, we'll throw this down here so I don't get wet dry stuff all over the place and oh, my wife's hair <clears throat> and we'll just give this a little bit of circular motion just want to see if you can polish this up to make it as absolutely smooth as possible and you can see there's a little bit of stuff coming off there and you also want to make sure that you kind of get the old uh, the old uh, detent path as uh, shiny as possible too as well you can see there what that what's coming off this and let's just see if we can show you that some there is some stuff coming off there and that's part of the reason why I like having the white cloth but 
right. Uh, let's just see what else we could possibly use. We will try to use a little bit of this Flitz polish to see if we can polish this up. Now, I think, you know, if you've had something that's a, 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 a metal polish that I just put way too much on there, but I mean, if you have a something that is a uh, electrical little tool like a Dremel, this will make this go way faster and do a way better job. But I do have one. I just thought I would see if I could make it a little bit nicer just with this. As you can see. So now the reason that this will smooth is because in this metal polish, there's actually, I think like a citric acid is in there, but for the most part, there's also some very, very fine abrasive powder. And after all, what is sandpaper but abrasives on a piece of paper? And so there we go. Let's just see. Now, even though this isn't completely shiny, you can see that it is shinier by the fact that it is removing some uh, of the acid wash coating on there. And believe me, I mean, if you felt this compared to this, you would see that it is shinier. Okay. And what we'll end up probably doing is we'll probably take a look at this knife in the future. And I will show you. This has sworn this down till it's smooth metal. Okay, so let's get this tied up now. And you can see that there is, you don't want to have any of this metal polish inside the pivot because after all, you're going to be leaving an abrasive in there. And what's it going to do? It's going to abrade the metal. <laughs> it's going to put a gritty feeling in there. And so we better put our lid on top of our flits. Otherwise, I could hit it and send the whole schwack load of flits flying. Okay, so let's clean this all up with our fantastic alcohol and you can see that it's lighter right across the board and you can see there and let's get there that's nice and cleaned up okay so now it's time for reassembly and hopefully this has done something. Throw that in the garbage. <clears throat> okay. So down like this. Oh, look at that. I hate to getting I hate getting stuff on my mat, even though that's the total 100% purpose of it. <laughs> you can see that. That's. Eh. There's a little liner lock. Okay, so let's put this. Oh, what are we doing? Hello. Okay, so let's drop that down on there. So now the one thing is I do not have any nano oil left. My nano oil uh, container cracked and so it was starting to spill it all over the place. So I do have this blue lube left and I ended up pouring what was left, which is about half a tube of nano oil in with this blue lube. So I have a little bit of a hybrid concoction here. So you just want to kind of lube this side in order to keep the other side, to try to give the other side some, uh, what do you call it? Some friction. So your blade is spinning on your washer and not against your scale and then you want to just kind of pop it on there hello oh sorry one other thing too i want to do is i want to put a little bit of lube inside there okay 
There we go. Feels kind of smooth. So now we want to take a little bit more lube. We want to put it on there. Oh. And oh my goodness, am I ever a little bit of a dumb dude? While I have this apart, we need to lube the, the detent path too. So we'll put a little bit of lube right there. Okay. So let's put that down there like that. Got the detent path lubed. Drop that down like so. Put our washer on there like so. That's all lubed up. And put our lid back onto our blue lube. And a little bit will do ya. You don't need to really soak it in there, that's for sure. Okay, and then here we have our little bit of a backspacer. So backspacer fits on just like that. And then this goes on top of there like so really really simple simple knife not a lot to this so what we want to do first is let's put in our pivot screw just to hold this stuff together And you can feel it spin a little bit on the back end. So you don't want to tighten that stuff all the way up. Now, we'll put that there like so. Now I am not a mechanical genius. <laughs> Let's just see what we got. Hmm. Ah. Certainly not a mechanical genius. I'm trying to put this stuff totally the wrong way. There we go. Put that on there. Mount it on there like so. And then put it through there. Okay, and then we put on the back one. Like so. Tighten this up a little bit. Tighten that up a little bit. Tighten this up a little bit. Oh, she's got a little bit of a a little G10 scale bias here. And let's just see what happens. If we turn this a little more, as we turn it, you should see it suck over a little bit this way. There we go. And let's just feel here. Now, I have to tell you, she is nowhere as smooth as I think it should be. Here, so let's just try something else out here, too. And so what we're trying to do is trying to get that off just a little bit. That's way better. And you can still see that she's... Now, this is where you might want to kind of make kind of a little bit of a sacrifice. Do you want to have this completely centered right off the bat here, like I said, so I can pull this over. And then she's over a little bit more. 
There she is. Pretty close to being centered. Sometimes even... Oh, she's fucking... Oh. Yeah, fuck it. She's fucking near fucking... <laughs> she's fucking near fucking centered. And the action is quite a bit smoother. It, I gotta tell you, it is way smoother. And it is drop shut a tude right now. Where before it was making a little bit of a raspy sound. And it was also way, way... Um, way way uh, stiffer and so polishing up these washers now i know that this this knife is going to rock it even more so down the road uh, but for the meantime i just wanted to um smooth this out and you know i have to say that the mission is accomplished so now we will put it together our tip down um our tip down uh tip up hello clip and then uh, she is put together and then I will carry this for a bit and I will tell you what she's like and let's see if we can clean these off just a little bit while we got it here <sighs> so it looks like the Kershaw factory may have made a little bit of uh, used some kind of maybe some clear thread locker or something like that because it doesn't seem to be like a blue thread locker. It only seems to be a little bit clear. And you can see that. Oh, she's she's a little bit dirty there. And we will put her on there. And uh, we will uh, tighten her all up. Tighten up the back spacers. And then Bob's your uncle. <laughs> As my friend Mr. Nick Shabazz would say. Hashtag not a brilliant man. <laughs> Okay, there's ones in there. And, like I said, if you can't get it in right away, put a little hair around it. There has been a fly in my office for two weeks. Can you, uh, can you hear that bastard? Get away! Oh. I tried cutting that thing in half with my hinder, and all I did was cut the air. I was really hoping I would uh, cut that knife and uh, that fly in half or cut the wings off or something like that so I could record that. Would you believe me if I uh, put half a fly here on one side and half a fly on the other? There. Just like butter. So now we're going to tighten up these uh, back screws here a little bit. <sighs> one little turn. Two little turns. That's way better. Way better. And she's pretty damn centered too as well. There. So if you like what you saw here, um, I you know would appreciate you guys becoming some subscribing Fonzies. You know, give you a thumbs up and subscribe. Also, please, please stay safe out there because we're not out of the woods yet. I want you to uh, keep your stick on the ice, the shiny side up. This is the big Canucker saying adios.